Ladies and gentlemen, the pleb is back. In today's episode, Justin Trudeau manages to get himself booed yet again. This week, Toronto, Justin Trudeau visits a mosque, trying to repair his relationship with the Muslim community, and he gets himself booed and asked to leave. As well, tonight, the world continues falling in love with Pierre Polyev after that Apple video, and now he's getting featured on Greg Gutfeld. And in our last story, the pleb visits Ottawa to cover the trans rights protests and gets himself attacked. You won't want to miss tonight's story. Stick around. Today's episode has been brought to you by Beaver Bitcoin, Canada's best Bitcoin exchange. This is not financial advice, but do you want to protect yourself against inflation? Our governments are out of control, printing money whenever they feel like it, essentially stealing from you. Now, do you want to protect yourself against that? You need to own Bitcoin because they cannot print any more Bitcoin. And this is why the government hates it. It takes power away from them. If you want Bitcoin, head over to beaverbitcoin.com. The link is in the description below. Thank you for sponsoring my channel, and let's start with today's episode. Welcome to your Sunday report. For those who are watching my channel for the first time, smash the subscribe button because this channel, we make fun of the left, and most importantly, we really make fun of Justin Trudeau. So if you don't like Trudeau, smash subscribe because you found yourself a new home. Today's report is going to start with a feel-good story. Now, it's no secret that Trudeau's relationship with the Muslim community has been spiraling downwards very hard with the liberals and the left trying to brainwash kids in our schools with wokeness. The Muslim parents ain't having that and have been protesting Trudeau and the woke for the last couple of months. But this is not why they are mad at Justin Trudeau today. Apparently, they are mad at Justin Trudeau for the whole Palestine situation to the point where he got booed and asked to leave a mosque in Toronto this week. Let's roll the clip. The Prime Minister has been a good friend to the Muslim community of Canada. Been making fun of Muslims all year. The oh, wow. Dude says he's been making fun of Muslims all year. Already getting heckled here. Community of Canada. Been making fun of Muslims all year. The, the <laughs> prime, making fun of Muslims all year. Prime Minister has a difficult, difficult situation in which he is dealing. It's a shame that you would allow As well, we have the Prime Minister here. We have ministers of the Crown here. We have MPs here. It's a shame. We, we ask all of you. We ask all of you to listen to them. You should take your people and if you want. Wow, they're saying shame. It's a shame. And telling him to take his people and leave. Does that Oh my god, is there anywhere this guy can go without receiving hate? Oh my god. And you know, it's not like hate hate. This is rightfully deserved hate. Please engage in dialogue because dialogue is important. Not yelling at each other. Please, please help us welcome the well out of Justin Trudeau. You're not respecting the guest more than anything else. Now, Justin Trudeau, after all the heckling and the booing, was able to get this really small speech in here. I am not here to give a speech. I am not here to say anything except thank you. Thank you for taking this incredibly, incredibly difficult moment. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words, but thank you especially for allowing me to play alongside you in this difficult time. As I have many times before. And, and here was the scene when Justin Trudeau left the mosque. <laughs> oh, man. How many more Palestinian children need to be slaughtered? How many more before you call for a ceasefire? Boom! Oh my god. 
I almost feel bad. Like Justin Trudeau's getting booed everywhere he goes. He's getting heckled everywhere he goes. It's almost as if Canada is bullying Justin Trudeau. I kind of feel bad. Actually, no, I don't. That guy. <laughs> here is an example of why I don't feel bad. Just read this tweet here. My man really said thank you. Just look at Justin Trudeau. Look at his body language. He's literally getting booed and heckled. <laughs> and he's telling these people thank you. It's as if he loves the abuse. But even though Justin Trudeau got booed, heckled, told to leave, of course that wasn't going to get in the way of a good photo op. Very Justin Trudeau-esque. But underneath that photo op tweet from Justin Trudeau from the mosque, the comments did not disappoint. This is your typical Trudeau comment section nowadays. From anti-taxer, you are the worst prime minister in history. Just go away. Unacceptable Canadian girl says, learn to read the room. Nobody likes you. The pleb wrote... These people booed and heckled you. LOL. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. What did Angela have to say? She says, LMAO, we've seen the videos. They didn't want you there. Ah, <laughs> what did Nana say here? Nana says, interesting that you are virtue signaling here. We saw the video. They didn't want you there. You pretend to do well, but more and more we see you. We see the fraud. Like your many costumes, you pretend a lot. And our last comment from Gary saying, I don't think they like you very much. And Alex Pearson had a pretty good comment here on top of Justin Trudeau's tweet, asking him if he's been to a synagogue yet. Why hasn't Justin Trudeau been to a synagogue yet? Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments down below. Why is Trudeau avoiding the synagogues? Now, Justin Trudeau is losing support from everywhere. From Muslims, from Indians, and hopefully now from the Jewish community. Why haven't you visited a synagogue, Justin? But the most surprising part is to see this poll here where Justin Trudeau is losing support. Justin Trudeau is massively behind with 18 to 29 year olds. Essentially, the youth have given up on Justin Trudeau. Pierre Polyev is leading 16%, 40%. Look at this poll is crazy. 16% ahead from a, with the 18 to 29 year olds. It's absolutely over for Justin Trudeau. But do you want to know who it's not over for? None other than Pierre Polyev, who is gaining in popularity every single week. And that Apple video that we've been covering on this channel just keeps going viral to the point now where Pierre Polyev is now being talked about on Fox News and Greg Gutfeld to the point where he got his own segment. Watch this. Canadian Conservative Party leader Pierre Polyev. <laughs> During a recent interview, a local journalist accused him of being a populist and taking pages out of the Trump playbook, which Pierre batted away while casually eating an apple. Roll it. Um, on, the, on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing, well, appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, you mean certainly, you, certainly, you tap, certainly, you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, <laughs> left wing, you know, this and that. Right wing, they, you know. I mean, it's that that type I of ideological thing. About, I never really talk about left but or right. Anyways, a lot I of people. I don't really believe in that. Okay. <laughs> I love that. The unspoken message: You're such a minor part of my day that I still have time for a delicious snack. <laughs> Let's watch some more. Perfect. A lot of people would, would say that you're simply taking a page out of the Donald Trump uh, <laughs> book. Like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... Well, you're um, the one who asked the question, so yeah. probably, you must know somebody. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Uh, I guess this is what leaders are capable of when they actually have teeth. Tyrus, the best... 
The best part about this is it's not just the apple. It's that he forced the reporter to explain the origins of his nonsense questions because he kept saying, like, some people, you know, that has to be done to reporters. Well, he made him follow up his question. Yeah. But what, uh, and I've, I've done this a lot in my life to people who I find inconsequential when they're talking to me. Yeah. Like, it used to be a guy would start smoking a cigarette while they're talking to you when they both smoke. Yeah, what? Is yeah. He picked the loudest fruit <laughs> in the world. <laughs> that is the perfect I give zero fruit. Yeah. When someone's talking to you and you're eating an apple. Because <laughs> there's no quietness. It just keeps going, which then rattles the guy, and then he sits there, and he's got his, I mean, only thing he was missing was a leather jacket. Yeah. I mean, everyone loves that Apple video. It's literal perfection. It's how you deal with the mainstream media. And the whole world got introduced to Pierre Polyev. But in a moment like this, smart people capitalize on such virality. And none other than Pierre Polyev's wife came out on X promoting a T-shirt that uh, the conservative party designed here. <laughs> Look at this shirt here. It says, how do you like them apples? With the conservative logo with an apple in the middle. And it says uh, on the arm, it says, fight for freedom. Huh? Pierre ain't too scared of the freedom word from it looks like it. This tweet had itself 6,300 likes and has been seen 1.3 million times. So this tweet about the t-shirt went absolutely viral and the comments are overwhelmingly positive. But you know what? The left showed up to be do what they do best, be triggered and cry. And this time they're crying over a bloody t-shirt. Yes, you heard that right. They're crying over a t-shirt. Let's go read some comments from the left here. With from Sherry. Being a bully is not something to be proud about. How about from JoJo? The thought of wearing this t-shirt, even seeing it, makes me gag uncontrollably. I'm reminded of Pierre's loud munching and talking with his mouth full while being so arrogantly condescending to a farmer asking questions. A farmer asking questions? That was a journalist, stupid. Stop spreading misinformation. That's why nobody likes Pierre Polyev. Or how about Antoniette? A girl's got a grift, Anna. You're pitiful. Proud to be among the majority of Canadian women who will never vote for Pierre Polyev. Now that is misinformation. Can someone tell Antoniette that Pierre Polyev is actually pulling way ahead with women right now and for her to stop spreading lies? And it actually got even sadder because many of you know that the left can't meme. It's literally science, okay? These people can't meme. And they tried to do a redesign on the t-shirt. Let's look at some of these leftist redesigns here from Asia <laughs> saying, I'm a dick, okay? Very creative. Or how about this one is even better here from... <laughs> Energy girl. I prefer this version. It's literally the t-shirt with hashtag nobody Pierre likes Pierre Polyev on it. How bloody creative. So yes, the left are crying. Pierre is winning. Nature is healing. And we're heading towards a better place. A Canada with no more Justin Trudeau. In our next story, many of you guys watched my live stream yesterday from Ottawa where I was going to cover the Million March for Kids. Now, the organizer, Camille Sheik, canceled that march, but Antifa, or mm, I guess the trans activists, committed to being there on Saturday and marching regardless. And of course, wherever they go, the pleb shows up. Now, all I wanted to do was literally live stream their march, not taunt them, not insult them. I just wanted to live stream and do it, my job as a journalist and document what was happening in the streets of Ottawa. But unfortunately, the trans activists or the Ottawa drag defenders don't take kindly to journalists because I was attacked for literally live streaming. Thanks to my friend Daisy Media for capturing this footage. Let's roll it. So here comes a counter protest escorted in by Ottawa police. You guys can see me right here. He's literally slapping my phone away. Hey! Why did you guys see Why are those noise devices loud here? 
Now here is what it looked like from my end. Now I wanted to walk up to the protest and actually live stream it and show people what was happening on the grounds in Ottawa. Look how I was received from these absolute psychopaths. <laughs> All right, we're in the front line. Huge. All right, you guys see that? You guys see it? Slap my phone. We're fabulous. Don't fuck with us. We're here. We're queer. We're fabulous. Don't fuck with us. We're gonna have some fun. Now, why is this guy jamming his megaphone in my face, blasting the horn at full blast? What is this guy's problem? Like, these are the first people to come out and defend Rachel Gilmore when she gets harassed or whatever. Well, how about the pleb who's actually trying to do some journalism and document this protest? I'm literally having megaphone slammed in my face and having my phone slapped away for doing my job. As a journalist, absolute hypocrisy. Whoever this masked coward is, is a little bitch. And to be honest with you, an absolute hypocrite. All I was doing was live streaming the march and I got attacked for being a conservative. Yes, for being a conservative. That's why I got attacked. Does that sound Canadian to you? But don't worry because Pierre Polyev is going to be prime minister soon. And I'm gonna continue using my platform to make sure that these heavily medicated dorks in Antifa don't get any funding from our government because this is what they're literally doing, attacking journalists. Anyways, enough with the Antifa negativity. Let's talk about something funny. The Trudeau liberals are now pretending like they care about housing, something Pierre Polyev has been talking about for a little while now, over well over a year. But now Justin Trudeau is pretending like the Liberal Party are the party of getting things built. And in typical propaganda fashion, Justin Trudeau was visiting a job site this week and he was not met with the kindest words, let's say. Shout out to Ryan Garrison for this golden clip here. Watch this. Hey guys, thanks for all your hard work. Wipe that fucking smirk off your fucking face! <laughs> he really should wipe that fucking smirk off his face. In our last story, it's election day in Argentina, and I've been covering Javier Malay on my channel for a little bit now. And the mainstream media, the left-wing media, absolutely hate this guy. Just look what the New York Times had to say about him. Javier Malay, a mini-Trump, could be Argentina's next president. Mini-Trump? That makes me like him even more. But watch this clip of him and showing his plan of how he's going to fix the Argentina government. Tipo y deporte, afuera. <laughs> Ministerio de Cultura, afuera. Ministerio de Ambiente y Desarrollo Sostenible, afuera. Sustainable Ministerio de las Mujeres y Género y Diversidad, afuera. I agree with women and gender diversity. I mean, does it get more government waste than this? Women's genders and diversity. There's a department for this shit? Diversidad, afuera. <laughs> Ministerio de Obras Públicas, afuera, aunque te resistas. Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología e Innovación, afuera. Ministerio de Trabajo, Empleo y Seguridad Social, afuera. Ministerio de Educación, Adoctrinamiento, afuera. Ministerio de Transporte, afuera. <risa> Ministerio de Salud. Wow, he wants to get rid of the Ministry of Education for indoctrination. Are you kidding? That's funny. Yo. Educación, Adoctrinamiento, afuera. Ministerio de Transporte, afuera. Oh, wow. Ministerio de Salud, afuera. Ministerio de Desarrollo Social, afuera, se acabó el curro de la política, 
Oh yes, a potential president who wants a smaller government. No wonder the woke communists at the New York Times hate him. And Argentina has been destroyed by inflation and big government, and their people are truly suffering. And this is why I'm rooting for Javier Malay. Let's go bring it home. All right, that's a wrap for today's video. But let me ask you guys a question today regarding the footage you guys saw earlier. Should it be illegal to wear a full ski mask at a protest? Should you be allowed to cover your face when you go to these things and do illegal acts? I'd really like to know what you guys think, uh, especially the freedom people. Like, should you have the freedom to be able to cover your face at a protest like this? I'd love to know in the comments down below. And as you usual guys if you enjoyed this video smash the like button subscribe to my channel share out this video i appreciate it or you can buy a membership if you want to support me even more my name is a pleb this was today's report and i'll see you at the next one peace